Hey everybody, welcome to What the Flick. I am Matt Atchity. That is Christy Lemire. Alonzo is in Venice. Venice. Ben is in Telluride. Telluride. We're here. But the cool kids are here. We're uh, here on Labor Day weekend. To yeah. Bring you all of the end of summer movies. Yes. There are so many of them. There are so many. It is the end of summer. And we're starting off with one that I think actually opened last week yes. and is on demand. Yes. It's called Lemon. 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 And that song's gonna be in your head now forever, and you're welcome for that. Thanks, so, Bart, for playing Lemon in the studio. Thank, thank you. you. So, Brett Gelman is an acting teacher, and he, at the beginning of the film, his, his longtime girlfriend, played by Judy Greer, who is blind, his longtime girlfriend is in the process of leaving him. And so, everything that he thought he knew is all thrown into chaos and flux all at once. And it's how he navigates um, doing his job and this young actor played by Michael Sarah, who he like worships and wants to buddy up with. And then this woman played by Nia Long, who might be his girlfriend. And does Judy Greer come back? A lot of weird, awkward stuff happens. Take a look. They love your look. Your audition, rock solid. I got a job. Tomorrow I'm going to New York for 10 days. What's in New York? It's better you stay. My sister has a black son, he's six. That's wonderful. I think we could both use some space. Okay, I hope you're well. Have you ever thrown a knife? No. Oh. 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 Hey, do you mind not doing that? So you were saying, you're not sure you understood this movie. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's moments in this movie that I, I don't know if I even enjoyed it. Um, this one's a tough watch. You're not meant and, to, I don't think you're meant right. to enjoy it. I don't think so either. This is this yeah. is a tough watch in a lot of places, and it is awkward, mm -hmm. and it is punishing, mm -hmm. um, intentionally so, not necessarily in the way that we were talking about, uh, what was the buddy comedy uh, cop movie, or Hitman's Bodyguard, right? right? Which is punishing in a bad in way. In a violent, This is intentionally way. punishing, and, there's stuff in here that I was really intrigued by. I really liked, um, I actually liked Michael Sarah in this more than I'd liked him in a lot of other things in a oh. long time. Oh, he's great in this. I thought yeah. he was great. Uh, <laughs> he He's tended to do the same Michael Sarah thing, mm -hmm. and this is, oh, look, he can actually act and yeah. do a different character, and I buy it. I mm -hmm. like that a lot. Uh, I love Neil Long in this. Mm -hmm. um, this movie, I found, got more interesting as it goes mm -hmm. along, but, I don't. I don't know. I, I read a bunch of reviews after it of it after I've seen it, and there's something going on here that I think maybe I missed even at the time. And going back, the statement that some other reviewers say that uh, the director, um, yeah, Nisa Bravo, yeah, Janisa Bravo, co-wrote co it, is making about kind of like oddball man children. Mm -hmm. Maybe as a man child myself, I didn't catch that. <laughs> I might have to go back and watch what? it. But what are you talking about? I'm not a huge <laughs> fan of like the awkward, like painfully awkward humor. Right. That this that doesn't that. always work for me. I, it right. works sometimes. It works, but it didn't work here for me consistently. So that being said, like it's beautifully directed mm -hmm. and it's beautifully shot. Mm -hmm. There's there's some shots in this, especially like a shot towards the end as he's kind of running. And there's that one shot. I actually thought of you. you did. There's a shot where there's this alley. And he's running down, and the lighting is—it's all this weird, diffuse lighting. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh, that's a shot that Chris would probably <laughs> notice as the cinematographer. Apparently, nerd. I didn't. Apparently, uh, I didn't because well. I don't remember it. Um, because I, I saw it a couple weeks ago, though. So yeah, it is very much like the Curb Your Enthusiasm style of like awkward comedy, and it's also a very and Jeff specific. In it. Yes, he is, and it's—it's it's a great cast. It's like Rhea Perlman and. Um, Fred Malamud play his parents. his parents. I kinda wanna see an entire movie of just right. them and their life. Judy Greer as this blind character and um, David Paymer is like, again, he's the, the psychotherapist who's still the great friend of the family, so he's privy to all of the years and years of pent up awkwardness. Um, yeah, this is, it's, it's like Career Enthusiasm, but it's also like a very specific kind of Sundance movie about arrested development and man children and um, people who are horrible, like everyone in this is pretty awful in one way or another in terms of being selfish or 
rude or they have ulterior motives or they have a knack for saying the wrong thing at the wrong time until Nia Long comes along. Right. And she is this much needed source of like decency and kindness and warmth to such an extent that you wonder, what does she see in this guy? Because I, I can't imagine what the attraction is. I mean, she's wonderful and radiant and kind. She's a makeup artist on uh, some shoot he does. There's, a, there's right. a, a great specificity to the weirdness of this movie. Like the the line of commercials that he does is very strange. The way he picks apart his actors and his acting class is really, really intuitive in the way that it gets at everyone's insecurities about how well they're doing. Right. Whether or not they're doing a good job at it, like this gets at like the actorly insecurity in right. a very honest way. And there's scenes yeah. where they're in the middle of the scene and you hear him as he's right. coaching just mm, Yeah. Yeah. This weird yeah. noise which we know people that do that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. I, there's there's moments of this that I think are really authentic, but you're right when mm -hmm. Neil Long comes on and, and the more interaction he has with her, it actually makes him something approaching human and you actually start to see a real person in there that I think up until he starts interacting with him with her mm -hmm. he's almost cartoonish in a way that cuz he's so horrible cuz he's so horrible mm -hmm. and yeah people are like that but that's part of what makes this so painful to mm -hmm. watch and then as as he goes on with her with Mia Long's character Cleo mm -hmm. there's these moments where you start to see okay this now I'm kind of seeing what a person like that in the real world mm -hmm. might have to be like to be able to survive in any way. And then by the end, we've lost all that and it just goes back to like the the yeah. circus freak show. Yeah. Um, and for what purpose? Just to gawk at them and and, and anyway, yeah. but, but it's, it supposedly is based kind of on Denisa Bravo and Brett Gilman's actual courtship. You know, she directed it and co-wrote it with him. This is actually about their life and meeting one another's families and what that was like. And so I, I guess it's meant to be an affectionate skewering of their own life, but, it, but, she, but they're so cruel to everybody in this movie that I wonder what the point of it is. It reminded me a lot of Alex Ross Perry movies too, um, if you know who that is, did The Color Wheel. Oh, There's yeah. a, a lot of like weird little indies, again, where everybody is awful in it. And it's just an examination of like, our worst tendencies as people, it but to what me, end? Well, and know. it kind of made me think of um, the Tim and Eric show. Uh-huh, Right, yeah. and I thought, okay, this is, which is a show that I, like, it's totally over my head, right? <laughs> and I thought, okay, this is, if so I guess what I'm saying is, if you like Tim and Eric show, <laughs> you're gonna like this movie. Right. In small doses, that works though. In right. little half an hour snippets, that works though, right. this is an entire movie. Right, but if you like, you know, to see robots fight each other, then, yeah. like I do, uh, then maybe this isn't for you. Anyway, um, I'm yeah, I'm I'm mixed on it though because it's a really good cast and it has its moments and there's a weirdness to it that is very is like a signature weirdness to right. it. And it's got its own, it's, it's a consistency to it. There's a through line. It, it is what it is and it knows what it is. But do, are you gonna enjoy that? I will tell you how <laughs> not to watch this movie. This is a note for everybody. <laughs> Here's how not to watch this movie: Do not get up at 5 a.m. Oh God! Drive into work. And start watching this movie at six at seven thirty in the morning. Just don't, because but it's least, like it's. You missed all that traffic coming over the hill, though. I, I did, but I came so in and watched that. this movie. Is so weird. Like all the coffee I had, it's 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 as if I had a bunch of coffee, and then I feel like there's the scene in the movie where he takes the hit off the joint. And he says, "Whoa, oh, did you guys put something in this?" That's mm -hmm. kind of like that. This movie really messed with me. I'm going to be in a weird mood all day. That's when he was running through the alley when he was high. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Coming back so, to me now. Yeah, it's, that's the scene that yes, I, that's the shot high. that I thought you would like. Yeah. There you go. Well, now I remember it. Now Thank you remember. You. Anyway. Um, so I'm saying five. Yeah. So don't five, watch this at 7:30 a.m. I'm saying five. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm giving it a five. I can't say it's bad because I don't think I. I mean, I. I. Yeah. I give it a five. All right, our numbers are five. It is yeah. a sixty-three percent on that tomato meter that you were also fond of. Yes. So see it or not. Yeah, right. or don't, right. but not early.